Today's Gospel begins with words that Jesus uses a great deal in the course of his public ministry. Do not be afraid. For many people, recent months have brought a good deal of fear and I'm sure there will be many anxious times in the weeks ahead. Indeed, so many people in today's society live with anxieties of one kind and another and the COVID-19 pandemic has brought greater burdens. As the school term draws to a close, those who would have sat public examinations this year have particular worries. Others have concerns about their jobs and of course the fears that come with ill health, whatever the cause of that may be, can be very great indeed. A particular joy in this last week has been the reopening of many churches across the diocese at this stage for private prayer. Some are nervous of course about leaving home and significant numbers of people must still self-isolate so worries and anxieties continue. Into these present circumstances then Jesus' words bring consolation. As we reflect that he is always with us, bearing our burdens, lifting our fears and bringing hope to our hearts. However, this is not all. For Jesus' words in today's Gospel are an introduction to the call to proclaim his word in a hostile world. In these present times, therefore, it is important for us to look to the future with hope but also to reflect on the ways in which we will declare ourselves for Christ in a new context that lies ahead. In these recent weeks, so many parish communities have developed new ways of bringing people together in prayer and in community, often in a virtual way. Some of the lessons that we have learned will develop into new ways of proclaiming the gospel, of carrying out our mission. We must also be ready to go out into the world again when the time is right, calling our brothers and sisters into the reality of life with Christ. As his faithful people, we must continue to proclaim the value of the human person about which Jesus speaks in the Gospel today, and the life and hope that we find in him who takes away our fears and who will never disown us.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome everyone to our Mass this morning. We offer this Mass for the repose of the souls of Dennis and Joan Dawson. We hear in the Gospel that we are not to be afraid. And so as we gather together to celebrate this Mass, let's think of those times when perhaps we have been fearful, full of fear, those times when we have not trusted in God and we ask for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. You came to call sinners. Christe, Christe, eleison. Christe, Christe, eleison. You intercede for us at the right hand of our Father. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison, Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows, do not be afraid, for everything that is now covered will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the daylight. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny, and yet not one falls to the ground without your father knowing? Why, every hair on your head has been counted, so there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares themselves for me in the presence of others, I will declare myself for them in the presence of my Father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of others, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So this week will mark a very small step for us as a parish community as we begin to return to some sort of semblance of normality. The details are in the bulletin and on the website and do keep a check on those just in case things have to change. But thanks to those who have volunteered, who are still volunteering, we're going to be able to open up the church just for a few small hours on a few days in the week at the moment but we can open up the church for private prayer. There are, of course, regulations that accompany this. 
spatial distancing, an entrance and an exit route through the church, uh, hand washing, sanitizer is available. There will be stewards monitoring uh, the use of the church and what's happening in the church. And of course, there to help as well. And then of course, when the church closes and before we open up again, there will be a small army of cleaners who will be in here cleaning the church so that it can be opened again. It is, as I say, a very, very small tiptoe, a small step towards recovering some sense of normality, but it is an important step. And I know too from the emails, from other types of conversation, discussion that I've had with people, mainly email, I have to say, that there are mixed feelings. For some, it will not be enough that even this small reopening uh, is too small a step and too late. And I hear that and I understand those feelings. Others, though, are anxious, not just those among us. And let's not forget, the virus has not gone away. It is still there. So there are people who are still shielding. There are not just members of our community, but outside this church too. People who are still shielding, who are still caring for others, including those who have children and those children haven't returned to school yet. So there are mixed, mixed feelings into our mixed feelings, we hear that gospel and we hear those few short words, do not be afraid. Let's trust in God and trust in each other that we can not just pace this wisely and correctly, but that we can put in place a range of precautions that minimise risk for those who do come into church and at the moment come in to simply pray alone. There's been much written about the effect of this virus on parish life. And some have said that our empty churches tell us a few things. One of the things is that, well, we don't actually need to be here physically. We can participate in Mass virtually. Indeed, I know there will be many not watching me this morning, but they'll be watching, celebrating, Mass from Rome or from Ireland or from anywhere else that fits and suits and that's absolutely wonderful. But what we must never forget is it isn't simply about this place. Some of you have emailed and said one of the best things, it clearly isn't me and it certainly isn't my sermons, one of the best things about these Sunday morning Masses has just been to be able to see their church again. But we are church. We are living stones. And what makes us church is when we gather together in this place or in other places, but that we gather together and in gathering together we are the body of Christ and it's that and it's that good news of Jesus do not be afraid that we're called 
to shout from the rooftops and to shout loudly and with all our voice. So my sisters and brothers, let's pray that this, our offering, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for us, a, for you, a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, with all clergy and religious, and with your entire people. Remember your servants, Dennis and Joan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Paul, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So we pray together as Jesus has shown us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your Apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever 
and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>